Now with breaking news. We are continuing to follow breaking news from Grenada. The Grenada Police Chief and Grenada County Sheriff are about to hold a joint press conference about the Walgreens hostage situation. Let's go right now to WTVA's Wayne Herford, who's been covering this story for us all morning. Wayne, what is the latest? Thanks a lot, Tanya. Right, we're standing inside the uh, on the Walgreens parking lot here in Grenada. Behind me, as you mentioned, Sheriff. Uh, Fair and Chief Douglas, they are answering questions right now, so we want to go live right now to what they're saying. Person inside of the Walgreens store here uh, with a gun, a male subject, and was holding hostages. Upon our arrival, we discovered that that was definitely confirmed. Uh, at the time, we could not determine how many hostages because it was a barricaded situation. Uh, I then coordinated efforts with uh, the Grenada City Police Department along with resources with the Sheriff's Department. We then called in uh, the MHP SWAT. Uh, there were other agencies that also assisted. Uh, during the duration of the incident, we did have contact with uh, the, uh, the aggressor, which was Mr. Hatcher. And we had some conversation with him. He was making some demands. Um, along with the fact that we had also had spoken with uh, someone else that was on the inside of the store, one of the hostages as well. So we were, get, we were gaining intel during the entire situation. Okay, you say he was making some demands. What are some of those demands he was making? Uh, he was making some demands that there were certain uh, law enforcement agencies that he wanted to speak with and, and, and some that he did not. He demanded, he made some demands such as wanting a helicopter or something to that effect. Um, so then once the SWAT team uh, arrived, we set up across the street over here is where the command post was. And it ended with us having to have to neutralize the aggressor. So you all neutralized the aggressor? Correct. When you say neutralize the aggressor, you mean you can shot? Correct. So you guys shoot him or was it NBI? It, uh, the SWAT team with the Mississippi Highway Patrol. Can I ask this question? Was he leaving the door when he was shot or was he inside? He was in the area of the front of the store at the time. Can I ask, uh, sorry, uh, can you say what his motive was for taking the hostages at this point? I really don't know. We did gather some intel from the from his family members that were here at the scene and they were located across the street and at a safe distance. Were the officers involved uh, be suspended as part of protocol? No, that, that is not part of what we would actually have to do as far as anything, as far as dealing with any personnel issues with the police department, we will not discuss that. How many uh, Initially, we thought that it may have been three, but, it, but then, we, <clears throat> then we got it confirmed that it was only two people inside. Um, during the standoff, there was one person that walked out and we discovered that that was a customer and we believe that he probably, we don't know that for sure, uh, didn't know that that person was in the store. Uh, yeah. Can you confirm, sir, that Mr. Hatcher had some kind of mental illness? The information we received from his family members and they cooperated very well with us and they did tell us that he had some type of mental episode during the, uh, during the standoff. Okay. Or sometime before then, they were giving us some details, and I won't go into those details of what that was. Right. That's right. Sure. I know the chief had the lead on this, but what yes. was your uh, department's just collaboration with trying to help neutralize the situation? Our collaboration with the uh, police department was to uh, give them the support that they need, help with uh, broadening the perimeter so that none of the citizens would get injured or hurt in case something went awry. Also, we was wanting to make sure that all of the officers that was setting up the checkpoints and uh, we was making sure that they are safe and hydrated and uh, we was just checking on their status as we went around there. Okay. With, the, with the hostages, were any of them injured? No, 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 no hostages were injured. They were, they were successfully uh, removed from the location here and from what I understand they're doing just fine. So we know they were alive so that none of them were beaten there was no there were no injuries to the hospital. As far as we know. 
preliminarily right now. I, and, and by the way, also, this investigation is being led by the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation. Yeah, talk about that for the stress for your officers going through all of this. How was that? It was, it was terribly stressful. We're dealing with a situation with an armed person, barricade situation. Um, and it was extremely stressful for us during the whole duration of time because what we were concerned about is that we wanted to do everything we could uh, to save Mr. Hatcher's life, but it did not end that way. And we were concerned also about officers' lives as well as citizens' lives also. And we also want to say we appreciate our, the citizens for cooperating with us and uh, when we had to broaden the perimeter because we didn't want anyone to to be shot during this uh, during, during this standoff. When Mr. Hatcher walked out, was he walking out to surrender or was he just walking out and y'all got them? What, what was that, what was happening there? I, I have not uh, determined why he walked out. Um, there were uh, uh, numerous uh, statements that were made that he was willing to do so. Now, why he actually walked out, I, I can't answer that question. Did he have a gun to someone's head? When he walked out, he did have a firearm. To someone's I, head? I, I did not witness him having a firearm to anyone's head. I cannot confirm that because uh, I did not personally actually see that. But from what but I did hear some, uh, and all this is fluid at the moment from my, my perspective, I did hear uh, some of our officials at the scene stated that he was holding a gun in a threatening manner. So I don't know what manner that was. How long did this take? It lasted approximately about four hours, from about 4.40 up to about 8, sometime after 8 p.m. Is it a part of protocol if someone is, you know, holding people hostage that he has to be neutralized in this way? Could he have not been, or was it just in a situation that was the best or for people's safety for him to be neutralized? Well, to answer a question like that, we never know. The the situation itself will govern that. So yesterday, it was quite evident that the threat had to be neutralized. Chief, what do you want to say to the family right now? I do want to say to the family that we are so, um, we have, they have our sympathy. And we spoke with them as soon as we arrived here, and we did assure them that we would do everything in our power, along with the other agencies, to assure uh, that we would bring all of this to a peaceful end. But sadly, it did not happen like that. What do you want to say to the community? I want to say to the community that rest assured and know this that myself along with the sheriff that we always work together and network together uh, anytime when we have any type of situation even answering just calls I can always depend upon Sheriff Fair to to assist the police department he can he can always depend upon the police department to assist him so I thank him very much for his efforts he and I were were, were together 80 percent of the time during this whole situation so that we would coordinate our resources on the police side and also on the sheriff's side. Chief, Sheriff, tell me what's next from you? What, what's, what are the next steps in this investigation to help this family, this body gone to crime lab? What, what's next? The coroner, uh, our local coroner did come and remove uh, his body. Um, I can't speak to that as far as um, where his body was taken to. Uh, and of course, in a situation like this, MBI would be better to answer your question per, uh, pertaining to any type of autopsy or results or anything such as that. I just have uh, one final question for me, Chief, Chief, or Sheriff, either one. Mental health, that's a big deal. You guys have to deal with a lot of things. I know sometimes you have to bring them up to the jail, the hold them to be shipped to uh, you know, mental health facilities, that kind of thing. Talk about mental health and why it's a big concern for you guys. It's a great concern for us because of the fact that we understand that sometimes uh, citizens have mental health issues. But, however, when it becomes deadly, we have to, we have to proceed in the manner that we did uh, dealing with this situation. And we don't like do that want? we're not happy with that none whatsoever. We can't answer the question of what is the answer to mental health. I'm, I am not professionally prepared to answer that question. The only thing what the sheriff and I work together to do is co coordinate efforts to provide protection for our community. 
And if you have any family members, um, this is to the general public as well as the family. If you have any family members dealing with mental health that you're aware of, whether they're uh, physical with it or they're dormant with it, please have them to seek professional help. Also, that goes for some of the family members that's dealing with mental uh, health citizens. Uh, this is a growing concern in the United States and all over the world. And until we get proactive as far as resources, uh, we're going to continue to have issues. And unfortunately, they end up this way. All right. All right. All right. There you have it right here on the parking lot of the Walgreens here in Grenada. Chief George Douglas, Sheriff Rolando Fair, answering the tough questions from myself, Chris Knowles, and other reporters on the scene here this morning about the hostage situation. We are going to dig a little bit deeper this afternoon. We're going to bring you some more information as the day goes on. I believe that's all we have from right now here from Grenada. Reporting live, I'm Wayne Herford, standing in for Chris Knowles and myself in Grenada. It, back to you in the studio. All right. Thanks, Wayne.